Hi, it's Dwyer. March 30th, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Also, money1776.com, a free site. Let's talk about the market. But first, remember, nothing I say in this video should be construed as investment advice. Please take the words behind me seriously. They read high risk. I'm simply sharing some investments I'm following or considering. As my paid subscribers at my crypto substack page, which is dwire70905.substack.com know, I consider cryptocurrency to be a generational opportunity, at least some crypto. And that's where I'm invested. But I believe it is very important to know the lay of the land. Let's talk about some recent developments that people need to take seriously because I believe we're in an atmosphere of incomplete, if not outright incorrect, information. Now, the Brooklyn Tower is the tallest building in Brooklyn. Folks, it's 1,066 feet. Just understand that that building is now in foreclosure. The commercial real estate crisis is hitting close to home. I need for people to think about the authenticity or the lack of authenticity in the current financial environment. I was raised in New York City. I used to hang out a little bit in Brooklyn. I had some friends who lived in Brooklyn. I'm a Bronx High School of Science grad, right? Now just to understand, back in my heyday, let's say teenage years, um, early 20s before my parents moved to Florida, uh, let me just tell you, some parts of Brooklyn were extremely dodgy. You couldn't have imagined 1,066 feet towers being built in Brooklyn. Let me point out too, when I was younger in the 70s, some parts of Manhattan were extremely dodgy. For historical reference, I need for people to go back to the 1971 movie, Shaft or Superfly, or the 1973 movie, James Bond, Live and Let Die, where Bond goes to Harlem. Right now, that's the Manhattan of the 1970s, right? Looking for Mr. Goodbar. That murder case, the movie starring Diane Keaton, that took place in Manhattan, right? Real events then portrayed in a movie, understand, back then, you could be a teacher and have an apartment in Manhattan even though you didn't come from a wealthy family. Now, the world has changed. Wall Street was flat. Look at the stock market indexes through the 1970s, right? Then, of course, we hit the early 80s and things changed. We'll talk about the early 80s a little bit later in this video. But in the early 80s, Wall Street took off. Then, of course, Times Square goes from being runaway exploitation heaven, right, to a Rudy Giuliani-inspired rebuild where you could actually walk around with your family, right? If you were in the Times Square of the 70s, which I used to visit, you understood that the Rudy the Rudy Giuliani era was really a break from the past. Suddenly, neighborhoods all over Manhattan started getting gentrified as Wall Street money started spreading throughout the city. And of course, it then jumps the river. And Brooklyn suddenly starts getting all of this new development. Now, I need for folks to think about the debt level that the federal government had back in Reagan's tenure, right, which is less than 100% GDP, to what it has now, 
right? Right now we have a more than $34 trillion federal debt, right? By the way, don't fall in love with the $34 trillion. That's changing every 90 days. You're adding another trillion dollars. And of course, that's just the federal government's debt. That doesn't include, excuse me, that doesn't include the debt in places like Houston, where they can't even afford right now to pay their firefighters, according to Houston's mayor. Right? That doesn't extend to the debt that's inherent, the unfunded liabilities in pension plans in places like Kentucky and, of course, Illinois. Right? So, folks, what's happened in the last 40 years is a debt-fueled illusion. When you see a huge building in Brooklyn, some of it is because of the market delivering goods and services being offered in the area, generating profits for real estate developers who then reinvest the money in the area to build buildings and facilities. Uh, but understand, part of it is just a debt-fueled illusion. Some lender someplace lent money to some developer who then built a building that the developer could not use to pay back the debt. Right? So just understand, right now, the tallest building, the Brooklyn Tower, that's how singular the building is. Folks, it's named after the borough. Right, the Brooklyn Tower is in foreclosure right now. Now, let me just point out that the Brooklyn Tower is just symptomatic of a bigger problem with commercial real estate. Let's cross the river in New York and let's look at Manhattan and let's think about the vacancies in commercial real estate buildings in Manhattan. Folks, the vacancy rate right now in commercial real estate in Manhattan, and understand Manhattan used to be uh, a place that exemplified the business community in the United States, right? Well, just to understand the vacancy rate is well north of 15%. I'm using conservative numbers here. Understand, there are reports that place the vacancy rate in Manhattan at well north of 20%. Right? Experts believe that it's going to stay in the 20s, at least through the end of 2025. Now, we need to, as investors, ask the question, Who's, loaning, who's holding these loans? The answer, of course, are banks. Right, folks? The banks are under pressure. You might remember Signature Bridge Bank, which collapsed. The assets got bought out by New York Community Bank, which, of course, would later report fourth quarter losses. Right? There is fragility in the banking system. Part of it caused by the fragility in the commercial real estate market. Now, in this environment, and this is important for lay people to realize, especially given all the misinformation, all the bad affect out there, politicians smiling at you as if their smile is supposed to erase a $34 trillion federal debt, as well as an ongoing but hushed up pension crisis. Just understand, in this environment, there is a heightened risk of default. Debt is not properly priced. And it's not going to be properly priced, at least not by the Federal Reserve. Because the wave of defaults would cause too great a reset. 
Now, former Harvard president, and he's a Democrat, if that matters to you, right? If you somehow are one of these people who don't understand that the $34 trillion in federal debt were caused by Democrats and Republicans, right? If you don't understand that there is enough culpability to cross party lines here, just understand Larry Summers is a Democrat, former Harvard professor, right? Former Harvard president. And he did a calculation and he figured out that according to the methodology we used back in the early 80s under Reagan, inflation hit not 9%, inflation hit 18% in 2022. Folks, that's a tragedy. Think about where interest rates should be if inflation is at 18%. What that means is if you kept your job, if your wife kept her job, the two of you worked and earned the same salary, you're losing 18% of the purchasing power of your take-home pay. Now, if you think your family has it bad off, imagine the families down the block who lost their jobs at a time of 18% inflation. And so, just understand, According to the former president of Harvard, the actual inflation rate in 2022, as measured by how we used to measure inflation in the early 80s, was about twice what the government was telling you. Folks, phony numbers don't change reality. Reality is what it is. So now, in an election year, and this is a shocker, actually it's not a shocker, I'm being sarcastic here, the Fed's talking about cutting interest rates. How could they justify that? With the federal debt increasing by a trillion dollars every 90 days. Right? It's inconvenient, it's unfortunate, but interest rates should not be cut. As the defaults increase, as you hear about more prime pieces of real estate like the Brooklyn Tower, the tallest building in Brooklyn being in foreclosure, just understand that access to credit will decrease. Right, look, you're an investor you might as well hear what's really going on, right? Phony numbers are going to give you phony returns on your investment. And you won't realize they're phony until you cash it out and actually try to use the money. Then you're going to find out that that money actually has less purchasing power than you thought it did. Now understand, as interest rates rise, and again, we're keeping it real, there's going to be life after this election year. If they're silly enough to cut rates, just understand ultimately interest rates are going to have to rise. Because inflation is with us. As inflation, as interest rates rise, expect a wave of real estate defaults. As Bitcoin rises, and the halving is about two weeks away. As Bitcoin rises, expect real estate investors to start moving some money away from real estate and toward digital assets. Isn't that exactly what rich dad, poor dad, Robert Kiyosaki is doing? You might live in a neighborhood where there are empty houses where there are investors who have bought the house because they want hard assets, right? They bought the house and they're keeping the house empty because of course, renting carries risk, right? That tenant might end up being a squatter. That tenant might end up, you know, breaking a window in the house. So you have a lot of towns, Toronto, Vancouver, 
where wealthy people are just parking money in the local real estate market, right? They'll pay the carrying costs, their property taxes and things like that involved. But just understand, you have a lot of people who don't live in the neighborhood, who actually have empty homes in the neighborhood. Well, folks, there's nothing stopping them from moving their money to better collateral, right? I think what we're going to find out is that Bitcoin is better collateral than owning a home, right? Let me go one step further. You may have heard that rental prices have dropped to the point where in something like 50 of the biggest cities in the United States right now, it's cheaper to rent than to own, right? Folks, that trend might continue for some time. Now, as real-world assets get tokenized on the blockchain, and folks, that's where we're headed, right? You're going to have a lot of people wanting a part of a hotel that's going to tokenize ownership, and you'll be able to just buy a token. And the reason that investment might be an excellent one is you will have the opportunity to have liquidity. In other words, your tokenized ownership portion can be openly traded. Right? Somebody else will say, hey, let me buy your one one thousandth interest in that hotel. Right? There'll be a market. The market will set the prices. People can swap in and out of real world assets once they are tokenized on the blockchain. But understand, as that happens, as markets become more frictionless in the space, the federal government's ability to hide the real inflation rate will diminish. Real market prices, which are based on supply and demand, will have greater sway over the economy. I know it's counterintuitive right now, especially given the rise of decentralized finance, DeFi, in the cryptocurrency space, but what you're having right now is more transparency. People are asking questions they didn't ask decades ago. Right? I can look up in under a minute the national debt right now. I don't have to wait for some spokesman of some agency with an agenda in Washington, D.C. to tell me the numbers. I have close enough to real-time access, and it doesn't take a lot of work. Understand how empowering AI is. You're on Google Gemini, you can ask it questions, it will spit out answers to you. And those answers will actually list the sources. You can actually then do the research yourself much faster than you could have before AI. Now let's talk about AI. I need to point out here how much the public dialogue has changed. Cryptocurrencies came out and then we started getting complaints about the electrical use. Right At the time, I told you here online, I thought the complaints were completely ridiculous given the utility of cryptocurrency, given the importance of sound money. Not to suggest that all crypto sound money, let's say Bitcoin, sound money, parts of the cryptoverse, given the importance of sound money, whatever the electrical cost was worth it. Folks, we're not even talking about the electrical costs anymore. Now that AI has dropped, it's clear that the technological advance is worth whatever the electrical cost is. Of course, steps are being made, both in crypto and with AI and with electric vehicles, EVs, another big electrical user, 
to use renewables, to have uh, less of a carbon footprint, okay, fine. But just understand, folks, in the big world, given the billions, with a B, of dollars being spent on AI, people will take the hit with regard to the increased electrical use. Right? So, for people who want to make money in AI, what they need to understand is that energy is a necessary part of the equation. Believe it or not, one way to make money in AI is to actually invest in oil. Uh, understand electricity, of course, comes from natural gas, right? Fossil fuels are part of the production process. It's also to invest in nuclear energy, right? Cameco, CCJ is the symbol. In fact, I'll just deal in symbols. Uh, modular nuclear reactor builders, SMR. That's another company that interests me. Also, BWXT, right? Again, they build modular nuclear reactors, that's what we need. Energy is at a premium in this crypto AI EV world, right? Let's talk too about AI. I know everyone wants, everyone wants that hot private startup that's going to make them rich, that has some kind of advantage right now in the AI market. I need for folks to understand how the private equity world is working right now. Before a company came up with an idea, then they went public. Now a company comes up with an idea, folks, the ecosystem is closed off to non-accredited investors early on. You'll have a Series A, a Series B, a Series C, a Series D funding round. There's enough money in the private equity space to fully fund multi-billion dollar companies and to only release them to the public, to only have the IPO after the VCs in the room have made a mint. So I need for folks to understand If you're not accredited, you cannot invest in these private startups. The people who can, who are monopolizing the market, who are making sure that they are well positioned for the future growth of AI, are the usual suspects. Right? Microsoft. Microsoft, of course, has already invested more than a billion dollars in OpenAI, right? OpenAI, by the way, still private, right? Google has given at least $300 million to Anthropic. Anthropic, of course, is still private. The reason you need to know about Anthropic is because Amazon has invested, well, recently added to its investment, $2.75 billion. As I make this video, Amazon has a total of $4 billion in Anthropic, right? Privately held AI company. Understand too, with Anthropic, Amazon is developing the Amazon Bedrock platform. You also have the Claude 3 family of models, which in performance, according to some, exceeds OpenAI in some areas. Understand too, Meta was developing a chip. You might be aware that Micron, the symbols MU, has gone parabolic recently. Look at Micron's growth over the last 60 days. Again, the symbol is MU. Right, well, just to understand, Meta was in the AI chip market. Uh, there is competition for NVIDIA in the space, right? Look at companies like AMD, for example. But just to understand, Meta decided, hey, we can't compete with NVIDIA here. 
let's join up with NVIDIA. Right? Understand, Meta is ordering a lot of NVIDIA chips. Right? Meta, big presence in the AI space. Just understand that Meta, of course, views itself as having somewhat of a partnership with NVIDIA. That's going to help NVIDIA's bottom line for at least the next year. So, in my opinion, if you want to invest in AI, given the current private equity system where promising com companies like Anthropic are literally getting billions of dollars from players like Amazon, you need to realize that if you're serious about investing in AI, you need to consider investing in the companies that are leveraging their cloud computing presences in the space already. Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Meta have to be three of the companies that you consider. Right? Let me add Apple to the mix. So, in this environment, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and understand Ethereum's a little bit overshadowed at the moment by the success of spot Bitcoin ETFs, right? I privately don't expect a spot Ethereum ETF to be dropped anytime soon, right? But understand Ethereum is really the foundation for decentralized finance, which I believe is going to eventually take over, right? Bitcoin, Ethereum, gold, right around all-time highs right now. Silver, a better bargain than gold, right? Understand, silver's far from its all-time high. You understand, in terms of utility, if I'm at the supermarket, it's an easier transaction if I use a silver coin than if I take out a gold coin, which is worth over $2,000, right? Let's stop kidding ourselves on energy. You understand that the energy market right now is undervalued. You know the real story here. The Fed might not be able to cut interest rates. Whatever the Fed does in this election year, sooner or later, <laughs> sooner or later, rates are going to rise. You know that because government spending has not slowed in the slightest. Right? You understand, too, access to credit is going to dry up. Officially, the unemployment rate's below 4%, folks. Just understand. New York banks are under pressure. New York's commercial real estate market is under pressure. I'm just naming one city. I could easily substitute in San Francisco for New York. I could easily substitute in Los Angeles for New York. Right? Rental markets in many of these cities are cheaper than real estate ownership markets. You understand what's coming. But understand, your demand, whether you use Uber, Lyft, or drive yourself, your demand for gasoline remains, right? Because guess what? The Uber, <laughs> the Uber driver is putting gas in their car. If you are in a Tesla, just understand, natural gas was part of the electricity creation for your Tesla, right? When demand is inelastic, and when you have inflation and you still need to buy that gallon of gas, and you're already deep into your transportation costs, after all, you bought or rented the car. After all, you have the job you need to travel to. You pull up to the gas station, that gas price has jumped 50 cents a gallon. You need to pay it. What are you going to do? Not pay it? Then what are you going to do with your car, which you've already bought, which you might be making car loan payments on? So understand, the energy space right now, to me at least, is undervalued. Right? I own some Exxon, symbol XOM. It's now above $115 a share. Folks, it's gone up nicely, right? Understand, 
You have um, a great natural gas play EQT, which is down right now. How long do people believe natural gas is going to be down? Right? If you are an infrastructure person, look up BIPC. Again, BIPC. Right? Because pipelines matter. Because energy has to be delivered. Let me also say, too, the China is in ruins story is overstated. Rather than look at the country, why don't we look at markets? China right now has an excellent position in the electric vehicle market, don't they? I want people to look hard at Li Auto. China's exporting electric vehicles to other countries. That's happening now, even with bad demographics. Take a look at Lee Auto. Also, given the importance of AI, given the fact that Amazon quietly is, you know, has, forget is, has invested $4 billion in Anthropic, just understand Alibaba right now is actively involved in AI investments in China, a country with far more people than the United States. Right? Don't fall for these ridiculous announcements that the U.S. government is trying to limit the technology that uh, China has. What I want you to do instead is a simple Google search. Ask yourself, which country has the fastest computers right now? You're going to find that China is among the leaders. Your assumption should be that just like AI is extremely valuable new technology here in the United States, it's going to be very valuable new technology in China. And just understand, Alibaba is well positioned. As the stock is cheap, I believe it's certainly something that's on my radar. The symbol is BABA. -B -A. Finally, if you buy clothes internationally, if you're one of these people like me who will, you know, see a deal on the internet and say, hey, why don't I throw a few dollars and buy some shirts from this outfit that might be located in Beijing, China, or wherever, right? Please take a look at PDD Holdings. Again, PDD Holdings. Folks, understand, politicians have set up a fake dynamic where they talk about China as if it's on another planet, right? As if it's supposed to be some company that you can't get an ownership interest in and that you can't profit from. Folks, just like Lee Auto is a publicly traded company, if I believe Lee Auto is going to make a lot of money, why wouldn't I want to buy some stock so I can share in some of the profits? If I believe Alibaba is well positioned and is going to make some money, why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I buy some shares and make some of that money with them? Just to understand, as these politicians, you know, try to demonize China. They're demonizing companies that are publicly traded in the United States. Now, maybe you heard of Temu, T-E-M-U. If you haven't, you need to look it up. Folks, I can't tell you the great bargains Timu right now has on its site. Right? Well, just understand, you can own a part of Timu by owning a part of PDD Holdings. The symbol is PDD. Right? We're talking about cheaper prices than most American retailers. We're talking about excellent customer service. Right? We're talking about items coming to your door in 10 days or less. Uh, we're talking about a broad selection. Right? Investors need to be concerned more about the quality of the goods and services that they're buying than in the country the goods are shipped from. Let me close by saying this. 
And it's a heartfelt foundational belief that I have. Sooner or later, the market takes over. Right? We have this crackpot, and it's a crackpot idea. And it's a relatively new idea that fast food workers in the United States should be paid $20 or more an hour. Right? The idea is that somehow these jobs are supposed to guarantee people the opportunity to pay their mortgages and to live, right? That's the living wage idea. Let me just say that's one of the silliest ideas I have heard of in my life. Not every job is geared to allow the job holder to support their family. I used to be a paper boy. The idea that paper boys are supposed to make enough money to, you know, pay the rent is simply ridiculous, right? What's going to happen? How the market is going to take over is that you're going to have a whole group of new companies, right? We call them new companies. Really, it's the same entrepreneurs, but they understand for political reasons, they have to start a new company. They're going to start a new company that employs less workers. That's based on AI. That's based on robotics, right? Right now you have robots who can make burgers, right? Just think about the cost savings. I'm sure many of you have already shopped at supermarkets that have disintermediated cashiers. Right? Amazon already has patents on technology that allows you to just register, go into the store, pick items off the shelves, and then walk out with the items, and they will figure out what items you have, and they will bill your credit card on file for those items. Right, folks? Once we reach the point where that Big Mac, because of labor costs, is going to cost you $20, a Big Mac, you're going to lose the McDonald's, the local McDonald's. You're going to lose the jobs in the local McDonald's. You're going to lose the advantage that the McDonald's has over sit-down restaurants on price. The very reason for the McDonald's' existence. So we're in a downtime right now where we're pretending that inflation is not as high as it is. We're pretending that we're in a position where the Fed can actually cut interest rates twice this year. And we're pretending that every job out there, including Paperboy, should allow you to pay your rent and raise your family. Right, folks? This too shall pass. Right? Sooner or later, the market is going to take over. There's going to be a time in the future where teenagers are going to return to the working ranks of McDonald's, where there's going to be an understanding that some jobs are entry-level jobs and aren't designed to allow someone to afford a house. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. You don't have to agree with me. We have a comment section where you can leave your thoughts for readers. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if there are investment ideas you feel the public should know about. Let the public know by leaving them with links, if you want, in the comment section of this YouTube video. Let me add a caveat to that. I used to make cryptocurrency videos here online, and then you had third-party actors who were running scams, who wanted people to sign up with Bitcoin gurus and uh, middlemen who had no reason for existing, right? Understand the entire purpose of Bitcoin is supposed to allow peer-to-peer -peer transactions. I shouldn't have to go through middlemen to do the transaction. If I see any of those type of uh, scams, in the comment section, be assured that I'm going to delete them. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your good faith responses. Thanks for stopping by.